I never thought I would ever say this in a million years, but I really feel bad for Paris Hilton. When it came to this documentary, I wasn't expecting to see what I was going to see. I was introduced to this by my homeboy, Prince Gimo, who I love like a nephew. But when he actually um, showed this to me, I was like, okay, this is Paris Hilton. Why do I care? I mean, she was in every newspaper there was. She was in every single video there was. She was every award show that there was, every party, everything about her. She was everywhere, especially in the late 90s, early 2000s. She was everywhere and she did everything. So why do I care? But after watching it, I'm like, wow. I didn't really expect it to go down that road. I didn't know that she went through that. I just thought that it was just her rebelling as a teenager, a rich, snobby girl. But I'm just like, the reason why I think that way, because I'm a person that has to work for a living. I'm a person that has to make ends meet every single day, work an eight hour job every single day while she doesn't have a work a day in her life. Her name will get her anywhere and it has. So as an average person like me, I am not going to give two hoots about this thing because I'm like, well, she's never going to know hard work. But putting that aside and looking at it for what it is, this is pretty much what she shows us. And what she shows us, a part of it was pretty shocking. I did not know that she went through a very traumatic, not so much childhood, but a traumatic teenager time whatever <laughs> i can't really i guess teendom i don't know but the thing is is that every teenager rebels every teenager is going to try to find their own way even though they don't have a clue what they want to do but in this case when it comes to paris hilton she was a hilton hilton was a name it was a brand and you had to you had to portray yourself in a certain way the fact that she had to take etiquette classes, the fact that she had to go through all these glamour things here and there and everywhere to look presentable because she was a Hilton kind of sort of reminds me like if you were if you were a member of the royal family, you had to look and present at, to present yourself in a certain way. Even though she pretty much wasn't a royal, she was a socialite and in a socialite scene because she was a Hilton. So she had to portray herself in a different way. And of course, she just wanted to be her. She didn't want to be a help. And when you don't want to do something and you're forced to do it, what are you going to do? Rebel. But this honestly shows the great lengths that some parents will go to protect their kids. And sometimes it throws them down a rabbit hole they can't get out of. Now, do I honestly believe that Paris' parents were aware of what was going to happen to her? Not completely. If you see your daughter being dragged out of bed by two goons to go to Lord knows where, you can't tell me that means that's going to be a good thing. She's going to be okay. For As a mom, if I was a mom, I would pretty much be like, let her go. Forget it. We're not doing this. <laughs> I would not be able to sit there and see my child being dragged away. Even though I would think that, okay, she needs to be disciplined, but not like that. Nobody manhandles my child like that. That's just me, and I don't have kids. But if I was in that position, I really wouldn't want that to happen. Now, do I, like I said, do I honestly think that her parents didn't know fully? They didn't know fully, but they should have been aware of seeing that spectacle. I'm just saying. Seeing that Papa Hilton isn't there kind of speaks volumes for me and also mama hilton speaks volumes for me as well i don't really have a lot of respect for them after hearing that but that's just because of what i've heard when it comes to paris if she actually does have certain um issues about uh, issues from that it makes sense it makes 100 percent sense <laughs> the fact that she has trust issues from all that especially from that much trauma makes sense the fact that she doesn't trust anybody let alone her own family after those incidences makes sense it's sad that that had to happen to her though but like i said she's a hilton 
and Hilton had to be portrayed a certain way. Now, moving on from her trauma, and I know this is a horrible segue, so I'm sorry, to Party Paris. Party Paris was her way of getting through. Thinking about that while she was in solitary confinement. When I heard that, I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> solitary confinement. I'm surprised she didn't go nuts. So I understand now when Paris actually did go to jail, I understand why she was shaking. I understand why she was freaking out. Because I remember the stories when Paris actually did go to jail and she was bailed out by her mom. I understand why she was freaking out. I thought that it was like, oh, she never been to jail before. No, flashbacks of solitary confinement. It all makes sense now. Going back and thinking about it, it all makes sense now. She went through a very traumatic teenage part of her life that is still there. And hints of it comes through, trickles through her life. But the fact that she's trying to take control, good for her. Good for her. The fact that she forgave her mom, good for her. Dad, Lord knows where he is. But anyway, the, I, the fact that she chooses to forgive her parents, if that is true, good for her. But... I know I've segued away from Party Paris, but Party Paris, in my humble opinion, did was portrayed as a ditz. Let's be honest, she was portrayed as a ditz, especially on Simple Life, but it worked. Simple Life was probably one of the most watched reality shows there were at the time. It worked. She's not dumb by no means. She has her own brand, and her brand has been in existence for over a decade now actually two decades she's been she's uh her net worth is like 300 million and she's still making money she still has her clothing line that's practically probably made close to a billion dollars i've actually smelled her um her fragrances they smell pretty nice but to be honest with you she's not a ditz by no means but do i think that was she going out of her way to show people that she wasn't not really. I think she was just being hurt. But she said, I don't really care about any of these things. I have barely even wore these shoes. I just buy these things just because of the whole persona. And it kind of makes me think of YouTube. Now, I'm not condoning anyone on YouTube for doing what they're, whatever they're doing on YouTube. I'm on YouTube. But I am in no way, shape, or form in the same um, category as some of these YouTubers. But you can tell that, or can you tell at all... <laughs> That with some of these YouTubers, their personalities are turned up to 11. So where you don't even know if that's them being genuine or if that's just their character. You can't really tell the difference. With Paris Hilton at the time, we just saw Party Paris. We didn't even choose to get to know her. And of course, she had those obsessive fans that really want to know a lot about her. And she probably did open up to them. But it kind of made me think a little bit about YouTube. You see these people turn up to 11 in order to get the attention. And it shows that Paris knew that she was going to get attention with this character. So she became more addicted to being the character because of what the character would do for her. The character made her millions of dollars. The character made her the most wanted socialite at that time. The character gave her notoriety. So is she... Just like that woman asked at the very end, I guess it was the director, are you going to divorce your um, persona? Uh, no, because the persona is her brand. The persona makes her money. She's trapped with that persona, but you can shut the persona off. How she can do that, don't really know. But seeing how she has insomnia was probably not only, and this is just my own personal theory, it was probably mostly the, the nightmares for her shutting her eyes and she probably still sees that every night and also the fact that she just can't stop going she feels like if she stops going then the money stops if she stops going then nobody will care anymore and i actually saw t noir that did a review on this and she said it was mostly about narcissism in a way i can see why she would think that i understand completely why she would think that do i think it's narcissism it appears to be that way, but it's mostly trying to find your identity. 
like it's really difficult to be kind and caring and selfish at the same time if you're selfish you care nothing about anyone else but you it's difficult to be giving and selfish at the same time at least in my opinion it is i do think that paris actually does care i think that she does have a very caring and giving personality but from the traumatic issues that well, from the traumatic events that she had in her um, teenage life in those schools kept her from trusting people, kept her from giving fully. She gives partially because she doesn't trust a lot of people because of what happened to her. That's going to take some time. And that's what I kind of saw leading on to the end. This isn't something that is going to be an instant heal as soon as it's over. This is a growing process for her. And it kind of shows me how genuine it is. This probably may come off of being narcissistic. It might come off of being um, someone that's just focused on themselves. But this is a growing process for her. She's almost 40. The fact that she's still making the, these steps, the fact that she's still trying to, um, to heal from this, and she's continuing to heal from this, speaks volumes. This isn't a, a process where you can buy a pair of shoes and you're fine. This is something that's going to take some time. The fact that she chose to forgive her mom, I think is a good step. The fact that she's um, reconnected with the girls that experienced the same thing she had, I think is also a good step. And the fact that she's speaking out on it and using her platform to do so is an even bigger step. This is an instant heal. This isn't something that's going to go away. And that's what showed me, uh, that, that's what I saw in this documentary. That this is a, a multiple, possibly yearly, multiple year step process. And she'll know when she's healed. She'll know when she's in a good place. But overall, y'all, I honestly think this was a good documentary. I think it put, um, it put a spotlight on these schools that do abuse their students. I think it put a spotlight on what these girls, especially not only just girls, but girls and guys or anyone that actually went to these schools and had to deal with the abuse, it puts a spotlight on that. And the fact that she's speaking out on it is even better. So I think it's a good documentary. I don't think it's shallow. I don't think it put too much focus on her. I think it was a step-by-step -step process. I think it was casually getting there. I liked it. It was interesting. It was something that was unexpected. And I think it's worth a watch. But for those that actually did see this, I want to know what you think about it. Leave it in the comments below. Let me know how you feel. Talk to you later. Peace out.